Hello everyone, I'm Rich Lamont. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, welcome. Today's fly is the first one in the new vise. Um, this is going to be the Black Dog, which I've always kind of viewed as a spay fly, because um, it's got uh, heron in the throat. Uh, this is one I tied recently. I'm not overly happy with it. Um, I think just the hook choice was a bit wrong for the shape of the fly. So I decided to tie a new one um, on this hook, which is a Byron Bjork hook. That is a Philip Jones 3.0 long shank. Um, here is his information if you like this hook and you'd like to get in touch with him. Uh, you can also find him on Facebook. Uh, just look him up by his name, which is pronounced right there on the card. Um, so, um, let's get started on this line. The thread I'm using is Vivas 12.0 in white to start. Just get in the gut. Now the silk gut, um, I've been soaking this for about 20 minutes or so. I'm starting kind of far back. And then I'm going to wrap forward, which is going to help kind of close this um, loop that I've made here at the end. I'm going to try and get it a little bit closer to the hook point. No, oh, the hook tip. There we are. And then I'll wrap forward, leaving about that much of the hook tip exposed. I'm beginning to wonder if I've got a thread issue. Okay. Now this is a floss body fly. So I am going to be gutting this um, most of the way. Now we'll also be putting an underbody on it. Now that I'm most of the way down, most of my way down the fly, I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut. Actually, let me use a razor blade. But be very careful as not to damage the finish on the hook when doing this. So you can keep the blade parallel to the hook and just slowly cut at an angle. If you can separate the strands, that's even better. So now here we are towards the back of the fly. Uh, I'm actually going to run back up the front and just solidify this even more. I really do think I've got something going on with this little thread. I'm really not putting much tension on it at all. Thank you. 
It only seems to happen with the white thread. My black thread doesn't seem to have this issue. And we can rotate the vise, take a look at our guts position. Okay, the tag on this is silver tinsel, small silver oval tinsel, and some yellow silk. So we'll tie in the oval tinsel here and work our way back. Watch that up point. And we'll wrap our thread and we'll, or our silk or excuse me, wow, pencil. And I'm gonna do just three turns. Now after you've tied the tinsel off actually run that tinsel back up the body a little bit right along where you tied the tinsel in and that'll help give you a nice flat or a nice smooth and even tag I'll go ahead and trim away the rest. Silk I'm using is the uh, JEC. Japanese embroidery silk. Don't need a whole lot of it. And I'm only going to use just a little bit. And what we'll do is we'll split it right in half. We'll fold it in half here and wrap that around the thread. Tie that in. And then we can use that to wrap backwards right to the tinsel. And in fact, that's a little on the thick side. I actually don't think we need to double it for this case. So I'm going to uh, actually tie it in by its end.
Otherwise, it, it looked like it was going to build up on me. And if it built up, then you end up having a very lumpy looking tag. This way we can have a thinner, more even better looking tag, I think. And then we'll go a little bit farther forward and then tie it off. So we'll tie all this up. I just want to leave a little bit extra of the uh, the end of it, so that way, if I have to unwrap it for whatever reason, there's something to there's something to work with. All right. So now that the that's done. I'm going to switch over to black thread. Take the burnisher and burnish the yellow floss. Now we can wrap this back. And we're going to go back to right about there. And we'll tie in our tail. <clears throat> I've got a couple of different tails chosen for this fly. Um, so let's just pick one and See how it looks. Not that one. Nope, not that one either. Choosing a tail is rather important. The tail sets up the rest of the fly. So if you have a tail that's too long, that's too tall, if it's too short, you're going to wind up with a fly that is with a, a wing that's disproportionate and it's just not going to look right. So making sure you've got the correct tail um, for the type of fly that you're tying. That's just an important part and sometimes we don't always get it right. care for that one either. You can see I'm just using my, my thumbnail here to kind of splay that out a little bit just to get a better look at the tail fiber, uh, the fibers on the feather.
Mm, that was definitely the wrong shape. Well, I may have to actually just grab another grab a another neck here and grab another topping off of it because I just do not like these these ones that I've chosen. So uh, I'll be right back in just a moment with another um, topping. All right, so it's actually the next day. Uh, decided to call it in for the night. <clears throat> Set up a couple of tails to to dry out. So I've got one that I like. And I formed this one on the table. I'm actually just uh, I'm just gonna pinch it a little bit, but. I soaked this one and then formed this one on the table, but I think this is going to work really nice. It's going to give us a nice open flowing tail, and then we'll have a nice matching set of toppings for it. So that's about where we would like it to be. Lengthwise, that looks good. And we'll tie in right about there. And straighten this out a little more. Okay, then you can see where I made that defined crease. That's going to be our tie-in point. So anything behind that, we're going to trim away. Typically, I like to tie in closer up into here, but... Just having trouble finding the top of it. Really meant... The requirements that I had. So, I'm going with this one. <clears throat> okay, now you'll see that I've actually gone and put down a little bit more thread right here. And what that's doing is just leaving a nice foundation for the tail to tie on to. When I tie it in, it's nice and flat and straight. I kind of feel like it's a little on the long side. Not by much, but... I'm okay with that. Alright, so now we've trimmed away the, the rest. Now we can... I'm just tying this in. I'm just laying down a little extra thread there. <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> As you can see, there's a little bit of a, a lump right here or a rise when it comes to the gut. kind of creating a, or filling that in just a little bit, will kind of help a little. Won't be so noticeable. Hopefully our wraps of tinsel and everything, and uh, when we lay down the floss, uh, the floss and everything should fill that gap in, uh, body tinsels and whatnot, so I'm not really overly concerned about that.
when the tail calls for scarlet ibis in the recipe. So <clears throat> I recently found a nice pair. So I'm actually going to use those here. So these are scarlet ibis feathers. These look like secondary uh, wing quills, so I'm going to use the probably a couple of stiffer pieces from right up in here on this side of it. So we don't need much. I think we're only going to use a few, maybe four or five. Um, stri strips. So we'll go up in here. the other side. So now we'll put them together. You go with me. <clears throat> okay, so now we've got them together back to back. Just like we would with a married wing. And line the tips up, make sure the tips have a little bit of an angle to them, like they would when they were on the wing feather. And if they don't have enough of a point, you can just kind of grab them. And that'll, and if you twist it just a little bit, take your fingers, and pull, and then pull out on this one. That'll help lengthen that little bit of a, a angle at the end. these, get them on the back, and you want to have them almost straddle that, um, that tail, and then do a loose wrap over it, and just like always, just let the bobbin hang, you can make your little bit of adjustment here like so, just grab each end, and you can pull back on it just a little and that'll center it underneath the thread add another wrap and then take a quick look at where you're at position is good um, I'd like it to point upwards a little bit more, have more curve And that's kind of like more curve that I'd like to have, so let's try this again. Okay, second wrap. I like that. I'm okay with that. So now we can wrap a few forward. Get that cinched down good. Ostrich butt. I 
and take our Oster Churl. Sorry, I've got the doors and the windows open. It's a really nice day out. I'm trying to get some air in the house, so you might uh, hear some traffic. So, well, I've got my Oster Churl. And you want to make sure that you strip just a bit off the tip here. That'll expose the quill. And then you want to have the hurl so that way the fuzzy part is facing up when you tie it against the shank. This is also where you want to start adding some wax. <clears throat> Wax is really going to help um, prevent that that hurl from slipping on you. It's got a tendency to want to slip on itself. And... Tie that in. Fuzzy side facing up. And you don't want to tie it right up against where you stripped. Leave leave some of that um, exposed. Leave like a millimeter maybe or half a millimeter. So then once you've got it tied in, pull it towards you and then up and wrap away from you. And that should orient it so that way the fuzzy part is facing the back of the fly as you wrap for your butt. Plenty, so we'll tie that off. And now we can go ahead and trim away the rest of this ibis. And what's left of the hurl? Okay, so now once you're at this point, you might have a little bit of a lump. Pardon me. You might have a little bit of a lump right here where your ibis, or if you use a substitute, which you could use turkey or goose, um, either one of those work really well as substitutes. It would be like a red orange. Um, color. But right here where that was, you might have a little bit of a lump, but that's okay. What you can do is grab some woolly nylon. Uh, and we create like a little bit of an underbody. I'd like to cover all this up anyway since we're going to have silk there. So what we'll do first is I'm going to take a moment and um, put a couple of things away. But then I am going to um, get the tinsels ready, get the flosses ready, and we'll get those onto the body of the fly. And then we'll create our underbody, and then we'll start wrapping everything. So uh, let me clean up, get the other materials ready, and I'll be back in a moment. All right, so I've got... The tinsel that I'm going to use for the ribbing is uh, Vivis Medium Silver Oval. And I've made two lengths that are equal. 
uh, since that's what uh, there is for the ribbing. As you can see, there's two bands of silver and then the yellow uh, floss is in between. So what we'll do is we'll take both, take the end of both strands of tinsel and we'll strip away the outer coating. The outer sheathing is hiding a nice soft silk core. So we'll tie that silk core in instead of the outer edge, the outer sheathing, it'll be less lumpy. Or less likely to be lumpy. So we'll tie these in one at a time. And we'll start on the back quartering away side. And then in the middle is the yellow silk floss. So we'll tie that in right next to the silver tinsel. And then we'll take our second piece of silver tinsel and tie that in next to the yellow floss. And milk those tied in I've not figured out this thread breaking thing. Okay, with those all tied in, I'm going to lay down an underbody. And then after the underbody, we can go ahead and start laying down the black floss uh, for the main body of it. So I'm actually going to wind this all the way up to the front. And might as well do a quick layer. I'm going to skip over some of it. It doesn't have to be exactly touching turns. I'm going to get my woolly nylon, which I don't have a label to show you for that, but uh, you can look it up on Amazon um, and look up YLI woolly nylon. Comes in like a thousand meter spool that, uh, believe me, will last you quite a long time, likely years. 
I've spooled up four bobbin spools with it and I've still got two thirds of a, the big spool left so all right so now we'll take the woolly nylon and just very slowly work our way down the body all we're trying to do really with this is give it a little bit of thickness to it but also make it smooth, flat, and consistent. This will help remove lumps and bumps. Help give you a nice smooth flat body. And as you can see by drastically moving the bobbin back and forth, I'm actually able to spread these fibers out more, cover more surface area. But also lay down a thicker or a thinner um, layer of it. And then rocking back and forth like this just helps settle those fibers into place better. start laying down some floss. So what I've done is I've gone through and put floss on also onto a bobbin spool. And since we're doing a, a long body like this it just makes it easier to lay the floss the silk down. And you can tie this in just like you do other threads right over the top of the other one. And now we can go all the way back with our floss. When doing long bodies like this, I find this is the easiest way to do it. And you can make them mostly touching turns. But whatever you miss, you'll definitely get on the way back. But as you can see, I'm able to keep it nice and flat and control it. Instead of wrapping a floss body where you know, you've got floss going in every direction, you got to worry about your, your fingers and um, other materials on the bench getting in the way. And, This way is, uh, in my opinion, a much easier way of doing longer, larger floss bodies. And when we, go, or when we make our way back forward, and then we can start filling in the gaps. See any spots that need a little extra floss, you can stop and you can 
continue laying it down there. Or if things are looking good, which for the most part in this one they are, you can just kind of keep your floss nice and flat and just work your way forward. Now, on our way forward is when we're going to tie in our hackle. So the hackle for this is heron. And if you want to know where your heron is going to be, if you're not sure, you can take your tinsel and very gently start to do some mock wraps. And it's on the third um, rib that you start your tinsel or excuse me, that you start your hackle. So... I'd say we're about right there. And you want to make sure that when you tie in your hackle, that you tie it in so that way it picks up on the rear um, tinsel and it picks up at the very top of the fly. So that would be this one. And we are right in the right spot. I'm going to have to get a material spring. So, now to prepare the hackle, we're going to... First, you got to select your hackle, which I'm going to use a couple of different hackles. Um, I want this to be kind of full and... I want it to have a lot of... Uh, a lot of hackle fibers on it. So these are a little on the short side. And what we'll do is just take these and just kind of spread them out a little bit. And that'll give you an idea of how long it's going to be. Um, these are going to reach about the hook bend. Which I think isn't going to be bad. So we're going to go with it very gently stroke these back so that way they're up out of the way and you'll see right here they start to kind of alternate and get farther and farther apart well that's about where we end um, when they start getting farther apart um, they get sparse and we don't want to use those at least I don't want to so I'm going to tie that one in, and then I'm going to prepare one more. And this one, I, I believe, the hackle fibers are about the same. Oh, I forgot to strip the... Uh, you can strip all the fluff off of this, too. Any of this short stuff, we won't be using that. So, same thing on this other one. I'll just strip these away and then pull these all down. And then when we get to where they start to alternate and spread out,
I'm going to try to tie them in at the same exact time. So of course I then have to line them up. Not the easiest thing to do with heron. Heron's a very delicate material. It strips very easily, it breaks very easily. Just be careful with it. And you'll be alright. And then we'll just wrap forward from there. Now we're up towards the front. We can snip these away. There we are. Now we can grab our black thread again and tie back in. Clip away our silk. Now we can grab the floss burnisher and very gently just go over the body. Now that that's done, we can start bringing up our other materials. First, we're going to bring up the yellow floss. And if you'll notice, there might be some, some strands on the yellow floss that have kind of gotten a little bit out of hand. So you can go ahead and just very gently straighten those out. And now using your fingers, you can twist the thread left and right and flatten it out. You want it to lay as flat as you can get it, so it's got a nice wide profile onto the body. And when you wrap your third wrap, it should be in front of the uh, heron by just a little bit, about a tinsel's width.
Okay, now if you've got extra silk, you can cut that away, but leave leave enough to work with in case you have to go back. Next, we'll bring up the uh, front tinsel, and then you're just going to follow that right along the front edge of that yellow silk. That's where I like to use the rotary function so I can see what I'm doing and make sure that I'm staying right along that edge. Of course being careful to not hurt your heron. And now when you get to the front here with your tinsel, same thing. I like to cut off just a little bit and leave some extra. But what I really like to do with my tinsel is, if I can, try to strip away that sheathing again where you tie off. Um, that'll help you with... <clears throat> Um, bulking by the head and then the rear um, tinsel and then again just follow that right along the trailing edge of the uh, yellow floss And as you can see now, right where this last, where this third floss wrap it, or tinsel wrap is, that crosses right on the stem of those hackles. And then when you get up here, I'm going to pinch this and I'm going to unwrap some of these and I'd really like to, like I said, strip down some of these tinsels but um, it's a bit difficult with this one so instead I'm just going to tie it off Let's see where I'm tied off at. This is not adequate. So if you space out your tying them off. As far as where you tie them off, should be able to still have a decent small head. Oh boy, losing hackle fibers.
I'm trying to work it with my thumb just a little. Maybe I can smooth out that. I'm going to smooth out that tie off a little bit. A little bit of the floss is just sticking out right here, so get rid of that fuzziness if we can. Okay, so now we're going to wrap our hackles. So these, we're going to take these, take both stems, lay them right inside one another like, like this. And then we're going to take them and try and fold them back. We're taking our fingers and pulling them backwards, very gently, and then as we wrap, keep doing that, and tuck that hackle right up against that rear tinsel wrap. <coughs> And if you can keep that hackle direction going backwards, you'll have a very nice sweeping flowing hackle for your fly. And now you see we get up here to the head, to the front, and you'll notice that I'm out of hackle. Those uh, hackle feathers were not quite long enough. Okay, so these, there wasn't enough hackle fibers on those feathers to really get up to that throat. So I'm going to add a third one. That This one's a little bit longer, so it should match the length on the others. And that'll be my throat hackle. So again, we'll remove the fluff, the shorter material. And then we'll start pulling these back again, spacing them out, getting to the tie-in up here. And I feel that'll, that right there ought to do it. We'll leave that and stick it out there like so. And we will tie this one in. And then we'll just wrap the same thing. We'll pull it backwards and we'll wrap the exact same way that we did uh, with the ribbing. As we pull it back, we continue to wrap and we'll do touching wraps. The way they're touching and overlapping each other. And that should give you a really nice 
throat hackle. And here we are with a very full looking <coughs> black dog, lower half. If you want it to look tighten, stop. Wet your fingers just a little bit and you can pull down on these. Be careful wetting your fingers too much and touching the body of the fly. Um, I tied this once and actually wound up having almost white floss because I had somewhat pulled the color out which I didn't think was possible, but it, it did. Alright, so we can reposition all these later on. Um, for now, we're going to move on to the underwing. Okay, the underwing is um, hackle as well, but that is a red-orange colored hackle. with me and I'll be right back. Alright, so the hackles for this are red-orange um, rooster hackles, cock hackles. So I've got, these are um, saltwater um, neck hackles. I had gotten a package of these a while back off of eBay. It was just an assortment of a whole bunch of different colors. Um, I don't mind the hackle, it's, it's not bad. Um, I don't use it all that often, but uh, this will actually serve the purpose pretty well right here. So what we'll do is my tie-in point is going to be somewhere up here. I know that much. So we're looking at about here for the tie-in. So we're going to strip that back. Decide if I want to orient it this way or this way. If I have a curve this way, it may fight me too much. Unfortunately, this is just the, the curve that these feathers have from being in the bag. Um, I may actually go over and steam these really quick. And see if I can just straighten them out. Though that right there would fit rather nice. If I can get them to sit. So I cut the rest of the uh, lower part of those feathers off. And we'll get these back to back. I'm going to strip a few more from the bottom. Okay. All right, I am actually going to go steam these. Uh, I'll be back in just a moment. Alright, so I was actually going to start this segment over, but I wanted to show you the difference. Since you guys saw what that uh, those hackles looked like before, now that I've steamed them, here's what they look like now. They're completely different. They're not twisted anymore, they actually look so much better. Tying them in, I'm thinking right about here 
So that way the wing will still have, um, there'll be enough room for the wing to, to still show some of the um, hackle here. And I'd like to have this void, um, well I'd like to have it not be a void back here. But if you have your hackle too high, too low, too short, you can wind up leaving a void between the wing and the tail. And I'd like to not do that. Um, I want this to look nice and full. So um, I'm going to use these and tie these in right up here. So I'll strip away a little bit more. Let's see. And I'm going to use my pliers, my flat nose pliers, and just pinch down that uh, tie in point a little bit. So that way they don't roll or sometimes these will have a tendency to want to roll. If you flatten them out with some pliers right here like this, then they won't roll on you. They'll tie in nice and flat and straight and it'll be much it'll look much nicer. Same thing with uh, golden pheasant tippets, you know, when you're working with underwings, being able to flatten out the rachis on your um, feathers really does make a big difference. They should tie in much easier. Alright, so now that's popped up like that, and I'll show you why. If you look right here, right where the hackle is, right here, I'm going to build up a little bit more of a, not a thread dam, but almost a uh, platform, a thread platform, and I'm going to wrap back over that um, heron just a little bit and that kind of creates a little bit of a flat spot kind of like you do with the tail it creates that little flat spot for tying in your material and then when you tie these in you're tying in on top and not down in front doing that hackles should lay down much better They actually want to curve the other way. So we're going to go with it. Same tie-in spot. We can put the wing right over the top of that and the wing should help push some of this down a little bit and that will compress the rest and give it a nice full look. And as you can see from the top profile, Now 
there we are. Just how I wanted it. Okay, time for the wing. So let's head over to the wing table and uh, we'll marry up the wing real quick. <laughs> 